This is News 8 This Morning. 6 a.m. on this Monday, Eric and Stella with you here. Boy, we're coming off just a really nice weekend here, Stella. It was absolutely gorgeous. Hope you got to spend some time outdoors. Did you guys go to the beach? Yeah, we went to the beach, went to the bay on Friday, and then to the beach in Del Mar on Saturday. So, boy, it's nice to have those kind of options here. Beautiful. We did the same. Yeah, so let's get right into your headlines. This morning, a convicted sex offender has now been released from a state psychiatric hospital and is staying at a North County motel. 59-year-old Carrie J. Smith, who claims he's killed three boys, molested 200 others, was released July 14th and has been moving around Southern California. Now, he was briefly located to cities of Orange and Corona, then Lake Elsinore. Smith calls himself Mr. RTK, which stands for Rape, Torture, Kill. He was sent to Patton State Hospital in San Bernardino in 1999. After describing inappropriate acts, he wanted to perform on a then seven-year-old boy who lived in Costa Mesa. Now, we spoke with that boy's mother about the latest developments. Listen. I thought that somehow he was going to end up staying where he's been for the last 21 years. My son is fine, but there are plenty of little boys out there that are perfect targets for him. A petition has been launched asking the governor to step in. And to the very latest on the coronavirus cases in the county, 568 new cases have been reported down from 628, but still one of the highest single day totals so far. And there are now more than 23,000 total cases. 6% of nearly 9,000 tests came back positive. The county is currently reporting, reporting 15 outbreaks and thankfully no new deaths. Local families keeping a close eye on what the new school year will look like. And today we expect an update on the future of fall and winter high school sports, including football. News 8's Netta Rompor is live outside Scripps Ranch, where one coach is leading an effort to bring it back. Good morning to you, Netta. Good morning. Yeah, the varsity football coach here at Scripps Ranch High School, uh, part of the group called Let Families Decide. In fact, he's the organizer and he did post that he got word from CIF. They're the ones that will be releasing guidelines on high school sports. And he's saying that they announce they will announce at some point today that sports will not be canceled, but rather rescheduled. He's saying that at least meets one of their goals because they were worried that due to the increase in COVID-19 cases throughout California, California that high school sports would be canceled for now though he's getting word that they will be rescheduled. And there's just about 820,000 other student athletes in the state of California that we have to fight to make sure that they get that critical piece of high school back when the school reopens. And that would be Falcons varsity coach Marlon Gardinera leading the campaign. Let families decide. Now, San Diego Unified School District says it's waiting for guidance. Same with county health officials on sports in schools. At this point, Dr. Wilma Wooten, the public health officer, did say that currently there's no guidance about youth sports. So California Interscholastic Federation, also known as the CIF, will be announcing its guidance and its plans for fall and winter sports. Again, telling the organizer of Let families decide uh, that they will be releasing the schedule so they do plan to have uh, sports just not the same timeline as what we would typically see now student athletes say this is a, about a lot more than just sports i was really looking forward to football this year not just because of the athletic part of it but also because it helps me become a better student Now, the decision from the CIF is expected to be announced at some point today. Again, they're expected to release guidelines and perhaps even a calendar of events as far as uh, when sports can begin. So many families all across our area and the state uh, will be waiting to find out what that means for their children, for their student athletes. That's the latest live here at Scripps Rants High School. We'll send it back to you. And I thank you. Last week, Governor Gavin Newsom announced that all schools can only resume in-person instruction if their county has been off the state's COVID-19 watch list for 14 consecutive days. But as of Friday, 33 of California's 58 counties are on that list. Later in the hour here, we're going to have San Diego Unified Board President John Lee Evans live with us to discuss what these guidelines will mean for San Diego schools. Stella. And with continued closures, some local governments are permitting more indoor services to head outside. At St. Agnes Church in Point Loma Sunday, lots of worshipers were seen attending mass in camping or beach chairs. It could be the first of many, especially in the city of Poway, which began accepting applications for churches and fitness centers to use their city parks. We're doing the best we can to, to keep uh, Poway businesses and Poway houses of worship 
uh, able to keep going on. They've been hit hard, and we're going to bend over backwards to make sure that they can continue. Mayor Steve Voss says the program has received a lot of applications and can serve as a model for other cities. Meanwhile, the city of Vista is also encouraging restaurants and breweries to stay open by offering outdoor dining. Some owners say they never envisioned having a patio, but city leaders have been making it easy. They're really supportive of all the things that we're doing, so it's been really great for them to be able to help us. Uh, not even waiting for letters, they're getting ahead of the game so we can be ready as soon as things change at the state level. So they've been really awesome to work with. Owners say the alternative is shutting down and laying off workers, and they hope to be one uh, for as long as possible. So they don't want to lay anyone off, so they're going to try to do the best they can to keep people working. And now for your morning rush. Police are searching for a hit and run driver accused of killing a woman in Claremont. This happened just after 8 o'clock last night along Ashford Street next to Lindbergh Neighborhood Park. San Diego police say the victim was hit by a truck, which then took off. The woman was pronounced dead at the scene. Witnesses told police the driver was in a gray or black Dodge pickup truck. So if you have any helpful information, you're asked to call police. A skydiver died after suffering an apparent medical emergency during a jump near Chula Vista. Happened around 11 yesterday. Cal Fire officials say the 47-year-old's parachute opened normally, but he appeared to drift off course, landing near Otay Lakes Road. First responders performed CPR, but he was pronounced dead at the scene. According to Skydive San Diego, the man had more than 40 hours under his belt, but he had just completed the five-hour beginner training course because he hadn't jumped since the year 2002. South Bay businesses are getting a financial boost amid coronavirus. City leaders in Chula Vista cleared the way for more than a million dollars in economic relief. And today, applications open at 7 a.m. with a deadline of Friday at 7 p.m. The Chula Vista CARES program gives small businesses up to $6,000 to help them stay open. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cbs8.com, and just click on the Help button. Today, thousands of workers are expected to stage a nationwide walkout to protest against systemic racism in the country. Strike for Black Lives is being organized by the Service Employees International Union. Walk-offs will take place at different times. Protesters will walk off their jobs for 8 minutes and 46 seconds. That's the amount of time an officer knelt on George Floyd's neck when he died. And hundreds of people showed up in Huntington Beach yesterday for a dueling protest. One group was rallying for Black Lives Matter, the other to recall Governor Gavin Newsom. The dueling rallies were held on opposite sides of the street. I want the kids to go back to school. I want people to get their jobs back. I want our freedom back. It's simple as that. Can you blame him? I totally blame him. I'm not here for the recall of Gavin Newsom. I think Gavin Newsom is actually doing a pretty decent job. I'm here for Black Lives Matter. The demonstrations were peaceful. No injuries or arrests were reported. A lawsuit has been filed and an investigation is underway into the federal government's response to protesters in Oregon. Laura Podesta explains how the way law enforcement is now handling those demonstrations is drawing concern from top government leaders. We want to warn you, some of the images are hard to watch. Wearing military gear and carrying batons, federal law enforcement officers in Portland, Oregon, are seen in this Portland Tribune video beating Navy veteran Chris David, who was peacefully protesting over the weekend. He spoke to CBS News affiliate Coyne over the phone. I stood there with my hands down by my sides and they just started wailing on me. David says his hand is fractured and he was also doused in pepper spray. He insists he was there to ask officers a specific question. If they thought it was okay to violate their oath of constitution. There have been nightly protests against police brutality in Portland since the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis in May. The mayor says the federal response is making things worse. People are being literally scooped off the street into unmarked vans, rental cars, apparently. Uh, they are uh, being denied probable cause and they're denied due process. They don't even know who's pulling them into the vans. The people aren't identifying themselves. The state is now suing federal law enforcement agencies. Oregon's attorney general says she thinks Portland is being used as a test for how to respond to protesters. Every American needs to be concerned about what's happening here in Portland. Uh, you know, these, these federal agencies are operating with no transparency. Top Democrats in the House said Sunday they were calling on federal inspectors general to investigate the tactics being used in Portland and other U.S. cities.
Laura Podesta, CBS News. As the nation continues to honor and mourn the passing of legendary civil rights activist Congressman John Lewis, Georgia's Democratic Party plans to name a nominee this afternoon for his spot on the November ballot. The legendary civil rights activist died Friday at the age of 80. Lewis served Georgia's 5th Congressional District since he was elected to Congress in 1986. San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner is also remembering the late congressman. Yes, over the weekend he tweeted out Lewis was no stranger to San Diego. You can often spot him at Comic-Con. Last year, he was here to see the USNS John Lewis, a naval ship named in his honor. That day here in San Diego, he wore the same type of clothes he wore in Selma. He will be greatly missed, that is for sure. He was still marching to the very mm -hmm. end for equal rights, right?